Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we are back with realistifying band 10 aliens and I know you're probably wondering why did this video take so long to make and that's because firstly I have been quite busy this past few weeks and haven't really had a lot of time to work on these aliens and secondly as you probably noticed this video is quite longer than my usual other videos and that's because today I'm actually gonna realistify three aliens inside of one as of a conclusion to this series now you're probably thinking how come you're gonna realistify three more aliens when only one more alien is left on the list and that's obviously stinks Fly. However, I also wanted to justify a few more bonus aliens that although they weren't in Ban's original 10 alien list as he got them after he unlocked all of his 10 aliens, they still played a huge role in other series and while well, they just look cool I guess. Now I'm not really gonna tell you who these bonus aliens are gonna be as I don't wanna ruin the surprise, so stick up to the end of the video to see it for yourself, but uh, anyway without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Alright, so I first started by adding a reference image of Stingfly, obviously, which then I immediately started tracing the shapes with the pen tool, as you probably have guessed. And honestly, for this alien, it was an ass load of work to trace the shapes, since, you know, he had a lot of shapes. And I mean, j just look at him. Anyway, once I was finished with that, then came the next step, and that is adding the textures. But with this came a few issues. The first one was that I hate insects and bugs, like I can bear to see them. And since you know this alien is pretty much a big alien bug, we were gonna have a problem with that. Actually, I'm not even sure if insects and bugs are the same, but who cares really and the other issue was that i knew finding the right textures for this alien was gonna be again an ass load of work but eventually however i managed to find three nice textures that i could work with and the funny thing about all this is that this alien is pretty much built by only three textures which is absolutely crazy like anyway i then started working on his wings with a nice texture that i found I mean honestly, out of all the textures, finding a texture for his wings was definitely the easiest one. After that, I started working on his arms and legs, which is pretty much the same process as with the wings. I added the textures, warped them according to the shape, and that's about it. So you know what, I'm not really gonna narrate this part anymore, cause like I said, it's just the same process over and over again, and I don't wanna get you bored, so let's just see what's next. After I spent a tedious amount of time searching for textures on my good old friend Google, this is what I came up with and I think it looks pretty nice. I mean, let's just ignore the fact that his legs and arms look like a bunch of bamboos, but I mean, who cares really. At this point, this looks like about to make you puke. So to fix that, I started on adding the shadows and highlights which obviously made the whole thing a lot better. For that, I simply used an exposure adjustment layer, added a mask and started painting the shadows and highlights. Now this part is like a stone carving, you just gotta keep chiseling away until it's this perfect piece of art. It definitely takes an incredible amount of time to get it right, but trust me, the results are always worth it. It definitely took some time until everything started to look nice enough for you not to puke when you look at it. After I was done with the shadows and highlights, I started working on his yellow thingies, on his tendrils. I mean, I'm not even sure if they're supposed to be eyes or whatnot, but I mean, who cares really? Anyway, to do that, I simply used the hue and saturation adjustment layer, where I picked a very bright yellow color and then started painting on the desired places. After that, I also used some blend if to give it a more realistic look and I also added a bit of a glow at the end to make them pop out a bit more and it just makes everything look cooler I guess and that's about it. Now while I was thinking for a while what little details should I add to the alien, I realized that a lot of insects in real life have hair in them so I just thought let's just do that too. Now it was definitely a bit of a risky choice since I wasn't really sure if it could work or not and if it didn't work I would end up wasting quite a lot of time but eventually thankfully it did look okay like it still wasn't great but it was fine I guess 
Now to do that I simply painted the hair strands with a very small brush and like I said it definitely was a lot of time consuming but in the end it wasn't for nothing I guess. After I considered the alien to be pretty much done, I added a camera raw filter and started working on a background or an environment, whatever you wanna call it. Now for this one, I obviously wanted to have Stingfly flying above a city where I would also have the opportunity to add some motion to the wings and make it look like it's actually flapping the wings, you know? And I also wanted to have some sort of sunset way back in the background that would act as a light source so I can add some nice highlights into the alien. I mean, obviously, and that's about it. So there it is, the final results and honestly I have to say I am pretty happy with it. I have a small issue however and that is I'm not really sure if the perspective is really on point or not but it still looks fine I guess and that's what matters. But anyway I know you're probably waiting to see who those bonus aliens are gonna be so let's just get straight to that. Alright so the first bonus alien is gonna be Cannonbolt. I mean you probably expected this since it's a pretty iconic alien and if you didn't I mean no worries but anyway let's just get on with the first step which I mean at this point you already know what it is and that's obviously tracing the shapes so let's just get through with that in three two one once i was done with that i started on adding the textures of course now for this alien since i had no living animal to base him off i mean the only animal that i found that closely resembles cannonball is an armadillo and that's because they both can roll themselves up but besides that they have nothing else in common i mean j just look at them anyway eventually i just thought let's just make this guy reptilian like for no reason whatsoever so i started on adding some reptilian textures and that's it now I'm gonna be honest, the textures that I found didn't really satisfy me as I didn't really like them that much but I couldn't find anything better so I guess I just had to go through with it. Next came the shadows and highlights. Now this alien definitely required me to paint much more shadows and highlights than I normally do. Like I don't know why, I think it's gotta do something with its shape looking a bit too weird and unrealistic but I guess it was worth it in the end so that's what matters. As of the mouth, I just used this throat picture that I found and honestly, I'm not gonna lie, it worked great. Then I started working on his lips, which for that I simply used the lip texture, changed the color to black and that actually did do the trick. As of his eyes, since he has just some plain orange eyes without any pupils, I just thought let's just use some veiny shiny texture to give it a more realistic look. Since if you look closely at our eyes, they have quite a lot of blood vessels and they're not just plain if you know what I mean. Now that did take some work but eventually it did look okay-ish, like it still didn't look great but it was fine I guess. Next I started working on his teeth, which for that I used either some shark or some megalodon teeth, I mean I'm not really sure but anyway, it was pretty straightforward, I just duplicated the teeth multiple times and placed them in the right places which later on I would add shadows and that would make them look like they're actually planted in there, because as of now that just looks... With his teeth set on place, there was no better time than now to start working on his claws. For that, I just used some dinosaur claw fossil. Now I'm gonna admit, I'm not really satisfied with the image that I chose. I mean the claw is pretty grungy and dirty and all of that, whereas in the original design, its claws are supposed to be more clean, if that makes any sense. But I mean it still doesn't look bad so that's what matters I guess. And after that I obviously finished it off with some shadows and highlights and that's it. 
Then I started working on those black stripes on his body or head. Now to do that I actually just hand painted them in like with what I did with forearms and grey matter. That in return just makes it look more organic and realistic. Now here's the thing, I really wanted to try a different approach with this one and that was to actually make those black stripes like some sort of armor attached to him. But eventually I just thought that that would be too much work and I wasn't even sure if that could work in the first place so I just ended up scraping that whole idea which I kind of feel a bit guilty about because I would really like to see how that would turn out but I mean I guess it is what it is. Now it was finally time to work on his shells or whatever they're called. Now for that I ended up using this pearl shell texture which at first I wasn't really sure if it's gonna work or not but eventually I did end up adding some more textures on top of it that just made it look a bit better. Now the funny thing is that at First, I thought of using some turtle shell texture, which I mean, let's just say I'm glad I did not use that. Here I also started on painting the shadows and highlights, and surprisingly enough, this actually looked great. I mean, I was legit surprised how little amount of effort I spent on it, and it truly transformed the whole thing and just made it look way better and more realistic. At this point, most of the important stuff were pretty much done. So I spent another hour just adding some more textures since I thought it was just looking a bit too bland and unrealistic. I also did some fine tuning and fixing some small stuff and after that I added a camera roll filter and started working on the background. Now as of the background it was pretty straightforward. I knew from the start that I wanted to have cannonball to be running in some sort of road and that was pretty much the whole idea behind it. Now I found this road image that also had this perfect sun in the background that would serve as a nice light source so that I can add some nice highlights later on. After that it was mostly just blending everything in and that's about it. Now I didn't spend that much time into this background since the concept behind it was quite simple but I guess still at the end of the day it works. At the end I did end up adding some final little touches to just spice things up even more and well here are the results. Well this is definitely not my favorite alien that I've made so far but I guess it's still there. But anyway this was the second alien so let's just get to the third and final one and also reveal who that alien is gonna be. Okay, so the second bonus alien is gonna be Wild Wine. I just really like his design and his abilities. So, you know, I just knew I had to realistify him. And also, I was just really curious to see how this alien would look like if he was realistified. As I've seen some other artists take on this challenge. So, you know, I just wanted to see my own take on this one. And that was one of the many reasons why I picked this alien. So, yeah. So, anyway, I first started with obviously the first step. And that was to trace the shapes for the third time in a row yeah and what's even funny is that i thought stingfly had a lot of complex shapes that i had to trace when just get a load of this one after i was done with well tracing the shapes I started on adding the textures and well for that i just used various different mossy tree branches and ivy textures It took some time but eventually things really started to take shape. Next as you probably have guessed I started on adding the shadows and highlights and well you already know at this point that it just makes the whole thing a lot better and it just truly transforms the whole thing. Here I also started working on well his head, there's really nothing much to say here, I just did the same process as I did before, I added some textures, some shadows, some highlights and well that's it. At this point most of the important things were pretty much done. So I just spent some more time on fine tuning and adding some small details which I forgot to record that part unfortunately but I mean it was quite boring and repetitive so you know it's nothing to be sad about and after that I started working on the background. For the background I obviously wanted to have wild wine in some jungle environment 
and that was pretty much the whole idea. I wanted the background to be quite simple and I think I did just that. Now here I also forgot to record a portion of the process, like is there anything wrong with me? So you know what, I'm just gonna show you the final results. You know looking back at it, I'd say I'm pretty happy with it, like the lighting isn't really on point because I had already added the highlights before I added the background, so in other words when I added the background the character already had the highlights in place so I didn't really have to paint any, I just had to accommodate to that which is easier said than done, that's why in some areas there are highlights when there shouldn't be, but obviously I couldn't just remove them so I just had to deal with it, but I mean I mean besides that I'm pretty satisfied with this one so yeah. And I guess this wraps this series for now, I mean I started this series way back in June of this year and now we're literally in December which is absolutely crazy and has been quite a journey. Now obviously this series didn't have to drag for this long but it was just an issue of motivation. Like it wasn't until November that this video started blowing up and really boosted my motivation to continue through with them. But anyway, don't be sad because this is still not the end to this series. Now that I've realistified pretty much all the original 10 aliens, I'm planning to make an epic artwork with all of these aliens included sometime next month. And also I'll be back next summer with, well, the next series where I'll be realistifying the aliens from Bantain Alien Force which is going to be absolutely epic. Now I know that's kinda a long time to wait but I mean at this point I'm just pretty tired of making these aliens and I just wanna take a long break and focus more on some other projects. But anyway if you've liked this video make sure to like, subscribe, turn on the notifications so you don't miss a single video and I guess I'll see you in the next one.